Quinn there. Well, let's talk now to researcher and Sevipoff. It's the Political Research Centre at Sciences Po University here in Paris, Bruno Cortres. Thanks for being with us, um, Bruno Cortres, uh, as ever here on France 24. I mean, we heard in that report, didn't we, just how complicated this case is and what it involves. Why do you think that it's um, so important, though? As, as you said previously, it's going to be the first time a former French executive, former French president, is going to be faced with a, a criminal, actually, accusation. He will be present at the tribunal on today. And obviously, because it's the former head of the state, uh, this, uh, this case is going to be obviously very, very followed by media. And, uh, and also because of Nicolas Sarkozy. And Nicolas Sarkozy has so many cases in justice. And today we have still six or seven cases for Nicolas Sarkozy in different cases with different accusations. As you say, former president, I mean, he's not really still on the political scene, is he? Why do you think it still generates all that uh, media attention that you mentioned there? Uh... It's first, it's the personality of Nicolas Sarkozy. Nicolas Sarkozy, when he was elected, it was a little bit like Emmanuel Macron. He became quite rapidly like a superstar. And also for the right wing, and particularly for the right wing voters, and for the party that Nicolas Sarkozy created, Les Républicains, Nicolas Sarkozy is actually the last right wing personality that has been elected French president. And also, of course, uh, still important to, to follow trials like this all the way through uh, to, to ensure or to, to try and discourage anyone else who, who may be in the future uh, th thinking that they can just get away with things like this. Yes, it's true that uh, if we if we would broaden the scope outside the case of Sarkozy, you could see that there is a trend in French politics, which since about 10, 15 years now is more preoccupied than it was the case before with the transparency, with honesty, and with this kind of thing. And it's true that the case of Nicolas Sarkozy on today is a little bit like uh, the old world, uh, that Emmanuel Macron uh, is qualifying like the old world. French politics. And what about Nicolas Sarkozy himself? I mean, we heard in that report, um, he says he's being persecuted, doesn't he? Yes, it's one of the main line of Nicolas Sarkozy is to denounce a relentless pursuit of justice uh, that Sarkozy repeats constantly that he, uh, he has never been condemned, that his criminal record is virgin, actually, and that he is facing, actually, a political uh, trial, that they want to demolish Sarkozy, that they want to eliminate Sarkozy from the political scene, which is the main line of, uh, of Sarkozy, which is also to constantly repeat at any time that he has been facing injustice, accusation. At the end, he was not condemned. Yeah, as you say, I mean, it's, a, uh, it's such a high-stakes trial for him, isn't it? I mean, in a way, he could see it potentially as his first chance, if you like, to try and clear his name in the light of all of this. Uh, yes, it's... Uh, Sarkozy gave an interview a few days ago, and he was precisely going on that point, which is that he wants to clear its name that is facing unjust accusations and uh, but you know the case that we are going to we are going to see this week is it is also linked to another uh, difficult story for Nicolas Sarkozy which is uh, the Libyan connection with the financing of its uh, campaign when he was elected French president yeah as you say I mean it's not a one-off is it even if he's cleared for this um, initial case there are others pending yes yes at least five or six and particularly the Libyan a case where uh, recently the main accusator of Nicolas Sarkozy, Mr. Takedin, decided to withdraw accusation, but it's not that much clear. The judges and the justice are saying that they have other, uh, other elements going in that direction. And uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, you know, is suspected to have received uh, secret money uh, from Gaddafi at the time of the 2006-2007. And it is probably for Nicolas Sarkozy the main accusation. What we are going to see on today is already quite embarrassing, but I would not say that it is the main accusation. The main accusation is really that he, he would have received uh, secret money from Libya.
And how is he seen uh, nowadays, Nicolas Sarkozy? I mean, as I mentioned at the top there, he's still immensely popular amongst some, uh, some French people. I mean, is he still um, popular? And what about uh, amongst fellow politicians, notably, of course, from the Republican Party? Uh, you know, in France, probably like in many other countries, when you leave the power, you get more popularity, which is exactly what happened to Nicolas Sarkozy. When Nicolas Sarkozy left the power in 2012, actually, he was having a very low popularity. Now, on today, uh, the popularity of Sarkozy is quite high. He should be ranked number five or four uh, on the list of the popularity, and particularly for the right wing and Les Républicains uh, party citizens and supporters is the, is the one which is the most preferred uh, one. Um, Nicolas Sarkozy is clearly saying that he wants to get back on the political scene, but you know, with political animals, you, you never know. Yeah, I mean, do you think he ever could make that comeback? I don't think so. I, I really think it is it is over. It is like, uh, it is a rhetoric, you know, that uh, former executive likes to, 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 to say, but no, frankly speaking, I think the, the context has really changed, particularly since the election of Macron. I can't see Sarkozy getting back. Great to talk to you on the programme today. Thanks very much. Bruno Cortres is uh, there from uh, the uh, Political Research Centre at Sciences Po University here in Paris. Every pop. thanks very much.